Now, for me, when I saw the scene with the foot through the windshield, I knew this was a classic. And I'm wondering what one scene when you saw the first edit or the finished cut that you saw the movie and you were, we made something really special here. The fight at Red's house. No doubt about it. Fight at Red's house. Well, the fight at Red's house we shot, you know, mid-movie. So I saw that cut together. And when I saw that scene, I got really excited. I thought, this fight looks like, like how I wish fights would. We're all big fans of the movie They Live, which has quite the 15-minute fight scene that's just super real. And I don't know, we just wanted some real stuff to go down, kind of. Well, I was going to say, with the inclusion of the Dust Buster, I think you might have topped that one scene, <laughs> They Live. I know you probably would not say so, but now, how did you and Seth get together and come up with this idea for this film? I mean, what was we the didn't. genesis of this? We, we, we didn't. Judd Apatow said... Here's the idea. It's like Brad Pitt from True Romance, two potheads getting hunted by their dealer. Go for it. And that's what he told us. And so we went back, and this is what we cooked up. Now, I'm interested about the last scene in the movie. Did you just have those guys sit down and improvise everything they'd been through during the shoot, or was that always in the script like that? Where they're talking about the heart necklace and they're recalling all the moments? It was not in the script, and we needed an end scene, so I came up with the idea to go to a diner and just go way too long. <laughs> And then Seth had the idea that they just recap the movie in the scene. Kind of in an attempt to make it that people can't pick apart our movie. Like, if they're like, well, that didn't make sense, we'll be like, yeah, I know, we said it in the last scene. Plain as day. That's awesome. So, um, now, I got to know something. I don't even remember what I was going to ask. Jeez, I just had a BG moment. What's up? Now, we just discussed the end of the movie. Are people going to find out the end of the movie? No, well, that was my other question was, now, Red, I believe, is Danny McBride's character's name, and I'm interested to know, was it always set up to end the way it does with his character? I won't say what happens to him, or or was that like somebody saw that and wanted him to go in a different direction than we... His his character went through numerous evolutions. When we wrote the character, it was the same character as Danny McBride is in real life, so when we met him, we were just like, it's you, You're, you're the guy. But yeah, initially, he kind of ceased to be in the movie about halfway through. Now, for you guys as writers, how was it to write the dialogue and then keep uh, and have the story, but then change some of what is being said in normal conversation? Because I noticed there's one talk about a turtle, I believe. And I'm wondering if that sort of stuff was written, or was that all made up, but kept in the line of the story? So much of it is written, and so much of it is not. I would say, like, most of the movie in the end isn't written. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like a lot of the stuff with Danny McBride, who can just make stuff up like you've never seen, is uh, totally improvised. There's a lot of improvisation. It's too, it's too hard for me to reach back and figure out what was what. 